Hello mga Kakit Angels! Welcome back for another Mathinic episode. This is Teacher Mika and this is Teacher Joymi. For our fourth quarter's week 4 and week 5 lesson, we will learn how to present data using different types of graphs. After going through this module, you are expected to use appropriate graphs such as pie chart, bar graph, line graph, histogram, and ogive to represent organized data. Do you know what a graph is? A graph is a visual representation of a set of values in relation to another set. It is used to present data being presented in tabular form. It is also defined by Merriam-Webster Dictionary as a diagram that represents the variation of a variable in comparison with that of one or more other variables. The important features of a graph are the title of the graph and the two elements or variables that are being analyzed. There are different kinds of graphs, each of which has its particular use, but why do we need to study them? A picture is worth a thousand words, as what most people say. This is certainly true when you are presenting data. Graphs and charts help people get a sense of data quickly. They can help show a relationship, a trend, or a comparison. Let's take a look at the following graphs which were obtained online. The first picture shows a visual representation of the world's most used social media platforms as of January 25, 2021. And the second picture displays some information regarding the active COVID-19 cases in the ASEAN countries from March 1, 2020 up to June 5, 2021. These graphs convey the message more boldly than any paragraph or data can. Let's start with a pie chart, also called a circle graph or a pie graph. It is represented by a circle divided into parts. It shows the relationships among parts as well as the relationship of a part to the whole. The data are presented in percentage form and represented in the circle graph by an equivalent fractional part of a wall. Let's have this example. The following is the pie chart of the choices of ice cream flavor of 60 students. Now the question is how we were able to construct this graph. To construct a pie chart, the first thing you have to do is to make a table which contains the categories, in this case the flavors, such as mango, raka road, ube, mocha, and tinapa. Next we have the percentage. In the above example, the percentage for each chosen ice cream flavor is given by 20% for the mango, 40% for the Rocky Road, 25% for the Upe, 10% for the Mocha, and 5% for the Tinapa. Then we have the number of students who chose a particular flavor of ice cream. We will able to get this by multiplying the corresponding percent for each ice cream flavor by the total number of students, which is 60. For instance, for the number of students who chose mango-flavored ice cream, we have 20% of 60 or 0 0.20 times 60 is equal to 12. The number of students who chose Rocker Road is 40% of 60 or 0 0.40 times 60 is equal to 24. The number of students who chose Ube is 25% of 60 or 0 0.25 times 60 is equal to 15. The number of students who chose Mocha is 10% of 60, or 0 0.10 times 60 is equal to 6. The number of students who chose Tinapa is 5% of 60, or 0 0.05 times 60 is equal to 3. And lastly, the angle of a sector or the part of a certain flavor in the pie chart. In here, 
We multiply the percentage to the measure of one full circle, which is 360 degrees. For the mango flavor, we have 0 0.20 times 360 degrees is 72 degrees. Rocker Road is 0 0.40 times 360 degrees is equal to 144 degrees. Ube is 0 0.25 times 360 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. Mocha, which is 0 0.10 times 360 degrees, is equal to 36 degrees. And Tinapa, 0 0.05 times 360 degrees is equal to 18 degrees. With a protractor, we are now ready to determine the measure of each sector of the circle representing each item in terms of degrees. That's what we are going to show you in the following video. How to construct a pie chart Step number 1. Draw a circle using a compass. Step number 2. Referring to the measurements on the angle of sector, we will divide the circle into parts using protractor. Let's start with the mango flavor which measures 72 degrees. Next, Rocky Road flavor with 144 degrees. Ube with 90 degrees. Mocha with 36 degrees. And Tinapa with 18 degrees. Don't forget to label the pie chart. Lastly, Use different colors for each section of the pie chart to make it easier for readers to interpret and visualize its information. And that's it! We constructed a pie chart! Next example. A college student has totaled his expenses for the last school year and represented his findings in a circle graph or pie chart. Observe the graph and answer the following questions. Number 1. Which two items account for the greatest expenses? You have five seconds to answer. Okay, very good. The correct answer is house rent and food. Number two, what percent of the budget is spent for food? You have five seconds to answer. The correct answer is 20%. Number 3. What percent of the budget is saved? You have 5 seconds to answer. Very good. The correct answer is 2%. Number 4. Which two items incur the same expenses? You have 5 seconds to answer. Alright, the correct answer is tuition fee and cell phone load. Number 5. If the yearly allowance amounts to 150,000 pesos, how much is spent for each item? Okay, so we will now answer this using a table just like what we did in the previous example. Okay, so in this table of the college student's budget, we will have three columns. The first column is for the budget, which is divided into house rent, food, tuition or books, clothing, cell phone load, utilities, and savings. Next column is for the percentage, which are already given. 30% for the house rent, 20% for the food, 15% for the tuition fee or books, 10% for the clothing, 15% for the cell phone load, 8% for the utilities, and 2% for the savings for a total of 100%. Now for the total expenses, we will be able to get this by multiplying the percentage to the total amount of the expenses for the whole year which is 150,000 pesos. So for the house rent, we have 30% or 0 0.30 times 150,000 which is equal to 45,000. For the food, we have 20% or 0 0.20 times 150,000 which is equal to 30,000. For the tuition fee or books, we have 15% or 0 
15 times 150,000 which is equal to 22,500. For the clothing, we have 10% or 0 0.10 times 150,000 which is equal to 15,000. For the cell phone load, we have 15% or 0 0.15 times 150,000 which is equal also to 22,500 pesos. For the utilities, we have 8% or 0 0.08 times 150,000 which is equal to 12,000 pesos. And lastly, for the savings, we have 2% or 0 0.02 times 150,000 which is equal to 3,000 pesos. Now, if you will total all of these, under the total expenses, you will get a sum of 150,000 pesos. Let's proceed with the bar graph. A bar graph is used for making direct visual comparison of data. The bars in the graph may be drawn horizontally or vertically to represent the information. How to construct a bar graph? Let us consider an example. Draw a horizontal bar graph based on the following data subjects, and the number of students passed. In science, we have 60 students. English, with 40 students. History, with 80 students. Math, with 40 students. And music, with 90 students. Step number one, draw the horizontal and vertical axis. Step number two, label the vertical axis with the subjects starting with science, English, history, math, and music. Step number three, place a scale on the horizontal axis to locate the information of the number of students passed. Step number four, graph the data starting with science with 60 number of students passed, English with 40 students passed, history with 80 students passed, mathematics or math with 40 students and music with 90 students pass. Step number five, shade your bars to make it more easy to interpret. And that's it. We constructed a bar graph. Example number two, the bars in a bar graph can also be drawn vertically. Presented here is a multiple vertical bar graph. Study the graph and answer the following questions. Number one, what does the graph tell you? Number two, what does each type of bar represent? Number three, which kind of SIM card has the greatest number of student subscriber? Number four, which kind of SIM card has the least number of student subscriber? Number five, which grade level has the greatest number of non-subscriber students? Take note of your answers and you may write them in the comment section below. Let's now have the line graph. A line graph is used to show changes between two quantitative data. Usually, one of the quantities under consideration is time. The relation between these data is graphed on a rectangular coordinate plane. Points are plotted based on the relationship of the quantities and those points are connected by a line. Example number one. The table below shows Jill's math scores in secondary school from grade 7 to grade 12. Construct a line graph to visually display this data. Here are the steps. Step number 1. Draw the horizontal and vertical axis. Step number 2. Label the vertical axis with Jill's secondary math score starting with a scale from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Step number 3. Label the horizontal axis with her grade level from grade 7 to grade 12. And step number 4. Plot the points and connect them. And that's it. We constructed a line graph. There are cases where multiple line graph is used. This kind of line graph is useful when showing trends and making comparisons simultaneously. The multiple line graph shown 
records the yearly production of selected agricultural crops in Sapang, Moncada, Tarlac from 2015 to 2020. Generally, there are slight changes in the rise and fall of production for palay, corn, onions, turnips, and camote. Observe these changes and answer the following questions. Number 1. What are being compared in the multiple line graph? Number 2. What does the vertical axis represent? How about the horizontal axis? Number 3. What was the approximate production for each crop in the beginning year? Number 4. Which two crops followed almost the same trend of increase in production for several years? Number 5. In what year was the production of palay, corn, onions, turnips, and gamote the greatest? Which crop showed a very slight increase? Take note of your answers and you may write them in the comment section below. Now let's talk about the histogram. The histogram is a graphical display of data using bars of different heights. It is similar to a bar chart but a histogram group numbers into ranges and shows no gaps between the bars. The height of each bar shows how many falls into each range. The histogram is constructed as a sequence of vertical rectangles. Each rectangle is drawn with its base equal to the class interval and a height corresponding to the class frequency as shown in the succeeding figure. Let's distinguish the parts of a histogram. First, we have the title. The title describes the information included in the histogram. Next, we have the x-axis. The x-axis are intervals that show the scale of values which the measurements fall under, whereas the y-axis show the number of times or the frequency that the values occurred within the interval set by the x-axis. And lastly, the bars where in the height of the bar shows the number of times that the values occurred within the interval, while the width of the bar shows the interval that is covering. The table shows the list of prices in dollars of birthday cards found in various drug stores. Construct a histogram using this frequency distribution table. Here are the steps. Step number one. Draw the horizontal and vertical axis. On the vertical axis, place frequencies. Label this axis as frequency. Step number two. On the horizontal axis, place the lower value of each interval. Label this axis with the type of data shown. In this example, price of birthday cards. Step number three, draw a bar extending from the lower value of each interval to the lower value of the next interval. The height for each bar should be equal to the frequency of its corresponding interval. And that's it. We constructed a histogram. Let's have the different distributions of a histogram. First, we have the normal distribution. In a normal distribution, points on one side of the average are as likely to occur as on the other side of the average. Next, we have the bimodal distribution. In a bimodal distribution, there are two peaks. In this distribution, the data should be separated and analyzed as separate normal distributions. Next, we have the right skewed distribution. A right skewed distribution is also called a positively skewed distribution. In a right skewed distribution, a large number of data values occur on the left side with a fewer number of data values on the right side. A right skewed distribution usually occurs when the data has a range boundary on the left hand side of the histogram, for example, a boundary of zero. We also have a left skewed distribution. A left skewed distribution is also called a negatively skewed distribution. In a left skewed distribution, a large number of data values occur on the right side with a fewer number of data values on the left side. 
A risky distribution usually occurs when the data has a range boundary on the right-hand side of the histogram. For example, a boundary such as 100. And lastly, we have the random distribution. A random distribution lacks an apparent pattern and has several peaks. In a random distribution histogram, it can be the case that different data properties were combined. Therefore, the data should be separated and analyzed separately. And the last type of graph that we will discuss is the OGIF. An OGIF, sometimes called a cumulative frequency polygon, is a type of frequency that shows cumulative frequencies. In other words, the cumulative percent are added on the graph from left to right. An OGIF graph plots cumulative frequency on the y-axis and class boundaries along the x-axis. It's very similar to a histogram, only instead of rectangles, an ogive has a single point marking where the top right of the rectangle would be. For example, draw an ogive graph for the following set of data. With that, let us first construct a cumulative frequency table. For the first column, we have the class boundaries starting with 1 to 10, followed by 11 to 20, then 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, and 51 to 60. For their frequency, we have 7, 8, 5, 1, 0, and 4. And then for the cumulative frequency, we will just copy the first frequency, which is 7, and add it to the second frequency, which is 8, so that would be 15. And then add it to the third frequency, which is 5, so that would be 20. And then add it to the fourth frequency, which is 1, so that would be 21. And then add it to the fifth frequency, which is 0, so that would be also 21. And lastly, add it to the sixth frequency, which is 4, so that would be 25. And for the cumulative percent, that's just first 7 divided by 25 times 100, that's equal to 28%. And then 15 divided by 25 times 100, that's equal to 60%. And then third, 20 divided by 25 times 100, that is equal to 80%. And then 21 divided by 25 times 100, that is 84%. And then copy the 84% for the same frequency. And then lastly, 25 divided by 25 times 100, that is equal to 100%. I use 25 as the divisor because that is the total number of the frequency. From the given cumulative frequency table, we need to take note the class boundaries. In this case, we will use the upper limits and the cumulative frequency. Here are the steps. Number 1. Draw the horizontal and vertical axis. Number 2. On the vertical axis, label the cumulative frequency starting with 0, 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, and 100%. Step number 3. On the horizontal axis, label the scale with the upper limits starting with 1, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Number 4. Plot the cumulative frequency with rectangular marks and will always start at the vertical axis with 0 because we always start from a count of 0. Then 10 from the upper limits with 28%, 20 with 60%, 30 with 80%, 40 with 84%, same with 50 with 84%, and lastly 60 with 100%. Then, connect the rectangular marks. And that's it. We constructed an ogive. That ends our lesson today. We hope you learned something. See you on our next episode, Calcute Angels. Keep safe!